laying around this shack. It's, it's too near the swamp. Hmm, your clothes are all wet. You feel cold? Huh? Well, it looks as though I'll have to find this out for myself. Oh, hello, Sam. Oh, hold this for me, will you? All right, Doc. Open your mouth. Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> Say, I told you to stay away from that shack. It's condemned. Yeah, but Doctor, that's where they live. What? Yeah, they ain't got no folks settin' an older brother. He moved in there with the kids a few weeks ago. It makes his living salvaging auto parts off in the dump. Well, I'll talk to him then. Well, I don't know, Doctor. He ain't the kind that I'd try to reason with. Huh? Sorry, bud. No hitchhikers. Not so fresh, fella. This is Dr. Christian. Oh, a doctor, eh? Well, what are you doing down here, slumming? Or did you just get lost? I'm sorry, but this shack is a health man if you can stay here. Sure, sure. Reserve us a suite in the hotel when you get back to town. I'll try to find a place to put you up temporarily. And toss us out in the street again? No, thanks. We've been all through that routine before. Have you been through pneumonia with those children? You kids feel sick? Cold? You see, Doc, you can't fiddle your herbs around here. We all feel fine. Now listen to me, fella. Come on, Sam. We have to see Martha. You better think it over. How are you cold? No, not really. Nothing serious. Why didn't you say so? Come on. Let's get some wood and stoke up the furnace. Waiting for that wing to be built. Better not let the doctor catch you sitting in that draft. Who told you to get out of bed, young lady? She insisted, Doctor. I, I feel all well again. I think. Perhaps you better stay in bed, Martha. Oh. Just a little while longer. We kind of figured she'd be cured by now. It's hard for a child to come a little on to you. The climate ain't right, right, Doctor? That's it, Sam. The climate. Dr. Christian! We didn't want to ask you to come down, Doctor, but seeing you was here, we, we thought maybe we could split the call. Of <coughs> course, Jane. What's wrong with you? You're telling me, Doctor. The baby we want you to look at. Well, you seem to have been getting enough milk. Oh, all he can hold, Doctor. Certified and pasteurized. He's driving on it, but isn't it a little expensive? Well, we've been eating a little light to make up for it. But the baby don't know, because <laughs> we tell him we eat downtown in a restaurant. <laughs> well, doctor, <laughs> can you see my husband? I've been to my poor lately. Well, can't you see me too, Doctor? You yeah. see me, Doctor? My kids are sick. Looks like bad luck hit us all at once. It'll be even more bad luck when it really starts raining. Unless we can do something about it first. Well, let's get to work. Hey, look! Maybe this will make you change your mind. 
There's nothing wrong. The kids are learning to inhale, that's all. <coughs> well, now, I told you before that the answer's still no. <coughs> On second thought, uh, we accept your offer. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Well, come on. I brought guests for lunch. Oh, doctor. Why didn't you telephone? My good lady's tablecloth is in the laundry, and I only have stew. They only have stew. Stew. Gosh. Are you quite sure they're only staying for lunch? I thought Dave here could sleep over the garage. What about them? I thought maybe you could find someone who'd take them temporarily. Look, if that's the way it is, we'll scram now. Come on, kids. You talked so big this morning, I figured you were a boss around here. Keep a civil tongue in your head when you're talking to the doctor, young man. And as for you, come with me. You'll need a lot of washing before you could ever sit at my table. Make yourself at home, Dave. Oh, don't mind me. I forgot it was spring. Uh, Judy was just fixing a button. It uh, came off. Don't apologize. That's your idea of a good time. Did you want to make an appointment? Sure. How are you fixed for tonight? Say, who do you think? Ouch! Quiet, caveman. You're interrupting a private conversation. You're doing the interrupting. I always was a pushover for a uniform. Why, you... Oh, you already met. <laughs> uh, informally. Fine. Roy, I think Dave is just the man you've been looking for. You know, for the job in your drugstore. Oh, you can't fire me. I quit. As you prefer. Uh, I want to speak to you for a minute, Roy. Roy. I want you to get the council together right away. Well, doctor, this is Saturday afternoon. The, the only place you'd get a quorum would be on the golf course. Make it there, then. Why, what's up? The squatter's town problem. Oh, so that's where you met that guy. Now, I'm not so sure they deserve help, doctor. What does the guy have to do around here to get a little nursing? Break a leg? Hmm, hard to get, eh? Well, if you don't back me up, nobody will. All right. Only I wish it didn't mean helping him, too. Tell me, Judy. Well, you can call me Dave. What makes the doc tick? How come he spends so much time in Squatters Town all for free? That doesn't make any sense to you, does it? No. What's he get out of it? Not a thing. He just happens to think conditions like that shouldn't exist. Try and sell that idea to the guys that are well healed. They think this country's fine the way it is. There aren't so many things wrong with it, Arthur Dave. Maybe you don't see it as well as I do, because you were born here. You get a better perspective on America if you live somewhere else first. Do you know what it means? Sure, sure. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of a job. It's a career in itself. I know how important a job is. I think I've got one for you. I need a driver. Oh, Doctor, don't be upset. You don't need I'm to... I'm the best judge of that, Judy. Do you accept? I suppose I work a 23-hour day for a couple of bucks a week. I thought there was an angle behind that missionary stuff of yours. Of all the ungrateful... Who's ungrateful? I'm taking it. Lunch! When's payday? Make it Wednesday if you want. You hear that, babe? What are you doing next Wednesday night? Oh, 
a monster. Find a home for you? I wouldn't wish you on my worst enemy. Or would I? Tell me, dear, why did you think of me? It came to me immediately. I said to myself, no one but Norma Stewart deserves those little angels. Go on, I bet you sure I would. Jerry and a try. I couldn't imagine why you were dropping in after all these years. Really? I don't think I'd have recognized you if it hadn't been for that hat. Thank you, Norma. But tell me, what about the dear children? Oh, I'm really not interested. Oh, but you wouldn't have to keep them for long. Besides, they could pay for themselves. Pay for themselves? Well, what do you mean? Well, you know, they could weed the garden, cut the grass, and oh, a lot of things. I wonder. What do you think, Dora? Go on. try to force them off onto me. It's because you're jealous of my beautiful friendship with Dr. Christian. It's our problem as well as theirs. Because Squatter's Town is a health menace. We can lick this now if we all get together. Make plans to build low-rent modern apartments. But, Doctor, these people are not like us. The trouble is you don't know these people. You never see them. Look, gentlemen. This argument could go on all afternoon. Now, I got a bad slice to straighten out. Oh, that slice. Order, please. Where would you build this project, Doctor? Right in town. That would solve the transportation problem and help them to get steady jobs. Well, that rules the whole thing out. There isn't any land on the market that's suitable. Johnson's right. Do that, Doctor. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop right next to your store, Johnson. Mrs. Stewart's lot? Yes. She'd never give that up. Besides, we can't afford it. Well, the widow's the shrewdest businessman in town. Well, well I'm on my... Wait a minute, boys. I think we owe it to Dr. Christian to meet him at least halfway on well, this. What do you mean? I think we should build these apartments. What? Provided Dr. Christian can get Mrs. Stewart to donate the land. Say, that's a great idea. Second the motion. Carried. <laughs> Looks like the meeting's adjourned. <laughs> well, I'm on my way. Well, what are you going to do now? I'm going to get that land somehow and hold him to the bargain. Oh, operator. Yeah, uh, give me state 4-9. Hello. What are you Hello, Norma. Oh, Paul. I, I, I don't know this problem. Well, I'm finding out. There are two children here whom your Mrs. Hastings brought. You, you mean you're taking them in? Well, Paul, if you want me to. Norma, I always knew you were a sweet, generous person. You try. <laughs> that chance. I've been trying to buy that lot for years. Yeah, I think it's wonderful of you. Isn't that soft soap, honey? Bert, mm -hmm. you don't think? Well, she's always been crazy about him. Of course, Norma. Everybody would love you for it. Yes, Norma. Oh, sure, Norma. All right, Norma. Well, then I'll certainly take the little darlings in for your sake, Paul. Tonight? Why, of course I'd love to see you. 
Any time. Goodbye now. Till tonight. Come, children. Come. Uh, don't be scared, dearie. Yeah. It's all right. You know, I've been thinking, Norma, that perhaps two children would be too much of a burden at your age. It's all settled, dear. Oh, but no, Norma. <laughs> Dr. Christian is delighted with the arrangement. Perhaps you and I have been alone too much. Where's Dora? <gasps> Goodbye, Norma. You're wasting your time tonight, Doc. Such old dames don't give away valuable property like it was a dime for a cup of coffee. As a matter of fact, they don't give away a dime for a cup of coffee. I don't know, Dave. It's quite a plan. You get the land, and the town builds houses, and right away, everybody loves everybody. I'm not counting on everybody. Just on the majority. There isn't a community in this country that won't meet the responsibility if it's pointed out to them clearly. You don't need a driver. You need a keeper. And when the middle-sized man saw his bowl, he said in his middle-sized voice, somebody's been tasting my porridge. But when the little man Good evening, saw Norma. Paul, oh, you startled me. Won't you sit down? Thank you. We love it here with Aunt Norma. Hey, that's what I was supposed to say. Maybe we'd better go to bed. You'll get the ice cream, don't we? Oh. You must be so lonely in that house with just that woman around. If you only had someone who cared for you, to tidy your desk and... I'm not much interested in my personal affairs just now. Uh, we've got to do something about the Squatter's Town problem. Don't let's talk about business. Let's talk about us. Well, this isn't exactly business. You see, uh, I want you to donate your empty lot. Paul, you never treat me like a woman. All my other gentlemen callers have something else to talk about besides real estate. Probably ain't had a caller in 20 years. Good evening, Norma. Here. Who's that? The ice man? you could outwit me, did you? Well, you have to get up pretty early to take the worm away from Harry Johnson, you, you philanderer. Say, what do you mean? Uh, two can play your little game. It's so nice of you to bring the flowers. You thoughtful boy. I think I'm going, Norma. Oh, oh, Paul. If it's something I said, I was just trying to. Oh, no, there might be a call for me at the office or, or something. Goodbye. 
Night, Norma. Norma, we've made such a mistake. Always putting us on a business basis. Why, we probably could have settled that little land deal long ago if only we had realized that our two hearts beat as one. Oh, try up your missile. You're not going to get my land. Two hearts beat as one. Well, you started it. You said I was a thoughtful boy. You're a chiseler. I'm a chiseler, am I? Well, what about Christian? He's only courting you for your land. What makes you think he's courting me? Why do you think he came around here, acting so coy? It's the talk of the town. How do you like that? I like it fine. What are we waiting for? Let's read on. She said take them straight to Dr. Christian. So what's five minutes away? So what? Well... This ain't nothing. I know a lot of stuff. Maybe it's hiding. Why don't you print so we can read it? We can find out what that says. Hey, lady! What are you doing? Why, you must be the two charity children from Squatter's Town. Who told you that? Oh, a little bird told me. Well, you go right back and tell that little bird to stick to her own business. Well, really? That's all right, lady. Can you read? What is this? Never mind, just tell us what it says. Lovingly, not. Here, you'll be thanked for this. Opening letters, meddling in other people's business. Five star final is out. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> Did you hear that about the spanking? Here, you take it. It's hot. I don't want it. Here. Oh, thank you, sir. Hey! I'm delivering that to Judy. I'll see that she gets it. Give me that. interested in getting your reaction on this project of the doctors. Are you sure uh, all of these squatters are worth it? I suppose if they had any character, they wouldn't be where they are. Well, no. Take this fellow Dave, for instance. Uh, 
Is he going to hang around here forever just because things look soft? David's been through a lot, Roy. You shouldn't judge him by outside appearances. Well, what have you been doing? X-raying him? I've made a point of finding out something about him. Last night, he was... I thought you had to work for the doctor last night. I did. But Dave was around and... Oh, Roy. Don't be ridiculous. I am not being ridiculous. I am not. You know, this is a little out of my line, but it's good to pretend you're hard on payday. There was some mention that on payday we might, uh... Say, didn't you ask me to go out your first payday? Well, yes. Yeah. But it's okay by me if you want to call it off. I wouldn't think of letting you get out of it. Hmm, after my money, eh? <laughs> Beauty. Dave, she's given us the land. Oh, Dr. Christian. Didn't she send any message with it? She scarcely sent no message, not even a letter. So rich old dames don't give away dimes for a cup of coffee, eh, Dave? It don't make <laughs> sense. There must be a catch in it. Even you could be wrong, Dave. I want you to go down to Squatters Town right away, Dave. Tell them the good news. Okay. You're the doctor. And as for you, children, you're coming down to the dog store with me while I talk to Roy. And I'm going to treat you to two of the biggest ice cream sodas you ever saw. <laughs> Thanks, but I don't think they'd be very good for us. Anyway, we don't like ice cream sodas. We'd better go with Dave. Nothing makes sense anymore. Yes, I'm sure of it. I wonder if he's been hooked. <laughs> if that letter reads the way we've been told, Dr. Christian wouldn't consider it. Six to an even, he will. Huh? Roy, I have it. He's giving us the land. No an even. Congratulations, Doctor. Thanks. It must be thrilling. When's the big day, Doctor? As soon as possible. Well, this is something that can't wait. <laughs> you sound pretty eager, Doctor. Well, when you wanted the thing for years. You needn't tell us, Doctor. We understand. I'm sure you'll be very happy together. Thanks. What? What do you mean? Doctor. You don't seem to understand what they're talking about. Well, I don't. You haven't committed yourself on this in any way. Well, I sent Dave to tell the squatters. Why, what? Then you'd better grab my car and stop him. Come on. Excuse me. What do you think? I don't. What is all this? Well, to begin with, you're about to get married. That'll be my room really this time. Of course, I may have to change a few details when we work out the budget. Just imagine living in a real house. Oh, you get used to it pretty quick. Ruth and I each got a room. Gosh, those clothes. They're so swell and moonicky. What do they feel like? They itch. What's up, Doc? Have you told him, Dave? Yeah. There ain't a hitch in it, is there? I have to tell him it's off. Uh, she's been having a bit of fever. It's nothing, Doctor. I'll feel all right when you move. Yeah, we'll get that change of climate now. Doctor! Oh, Doctor, we came to thank you. Oh, we never thought you'd do it. God bless you, Doctor. We'll meet him more than halfway. 
Let's see if it works out fine all around. Shut up, all of you. Dr. Christian has something to say. I'll rush through in record time. Come on, you're getting the whole works on this date. A movie and a soda. Well... Or is the drugstore too public a place for you to be seen with me? I'd love to. Hey, Doc, a tilt. I hardly touched it. Give me another slug. Well, Roy. Hiya, pal. Killed me. I'm gonna make him pay for that. Oh, Dave, come back here. Thank you. Two nickels for a dime. I'm not through yet. Okay, boy, now watch carefully. <clears throat> to gambling, and gambling leads to theft. And, well, if I were Judy, I'd watch my steps. Oh, but she couldn't be serious about him. Mm. Oh, that's a house ball. Mm. Here comes Big Joe. Knuckle it. Try for the inside seven. I got 18 free games coming. Well, what do you want me to do? Applaud while you play them? No, I'll take the cash. Can't you read? It says for amusement only. Sure, sure, they all do. Come on, give me any sense. That sign means exactly what it says. 
I'm not running a gambling joint. You see? He's picking a fight. Now look, a man makes an investment. He takes a chance and he wins. He's entitled to the profits. What's the matter? Don't you believe in the system? Hey, how about a truth? This guy's trying to get out of paying for our evening. That's another thing you'll have to learn. I want you to keep your hands off my... my pinball machine. Let's leave the pinball machine out of this. Why should I? He's got no right taking you out, Judy. Why not? Because you're not fit to take any decent girl out. Hey, would you mind taking me home, please? I've got to go. You don't mind? I just remembered something. No, I don't mind. This is the most important meeting we've had in years. But we were going to discuss the housing project today. You said yourself as soon as I had the land. Oh, yes, the land. And a nice piece of property it is, too. Of course, the taxes may come a little. But then, I'll be glad to take it off your hands any time you wish. I've met your conditions. I have a right to demand a vote. Doctor? You can have my vote now. It's no. I happened to see a sample in the drugstore the other night of what these people are like when you give them enough rope. But you definitely gave me to understand that... Sure, sure, doctor. I was all for it. Until I heard about that protege of yours fighting with Roy. This tramp stealing his girl, then knocking him down. Hitting him from behind. Pulling a gun. going over some bills. Yeah, I understand, Roy. I knew you must have had a legitimate excuse. Well, uh, anything go wrong? I need your help, Roy. I... Now, this could be made into a nice, cozy sitting room. Well, this is the room the doctor's patients wait in. Oh. Well, that's easy. He can put a bench on the porch. Hello, doctor. Hello. Oh, doctor, I'm so glad you came before I left. It's such a surprise for you. Grace yourself, doctor. It'll look better when I get the new drapes and the wallpaper. Got them picked out already. The drapes are to be a baby blue. You shouldn't go to all this bother, Norma. Oh, Paul, I'd love to. And now I must dash along because I have to buy the... <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to tell you, she washed out all the packs. You're in kind of a spot all around, aren't you? I guess I didn't help much. Listen, if it hadn't been me, those stuffed shirts would have found somebody else. I was just the out. Hello. Yes, Dr. Christian speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Jensen. 
Yes, of course. Yes, I'll be right home. You gonna work? What do you expect me to do? Well, at least you could break down just once and have a couple of drinks. You have them for me. I might as well dry myself. I'm apt to be out late. No, I'll tag along and wait. I gotta figure out my income tax. I think you have a good night now. But if anything goes wrong, don't hesitate to call me. And Doctor, I can't tell you. What... You better go back in. It's pretty cold. Good night. Good night. Good night. You know, just once, when somebody called up and said, my willy just swallowed the kerosene lamp, I'd like to hear you say, sorry, I gotta play pool tonight, I'll be out in the morning. And leave them without any light to read the papers by? All right, all right, forget it. Only, you've been making me feel like such a heel. That, well, it'd be a big load off my mind if you did something wrong once. I've been thinking about what I said before. I was wrong. A lot of it was my fault. Well, mind you, those stuffed shirts are still strictly no good. But that's not the point. The point is that I'm sorry I crossed you up by helping them. You're... you're a sucker. But you're the only guy I ever met without an angle. You've been... well, I... I might call it an inspiration. I might, but I won't. Anyway, I've got a plan to swing this housing thing. You probably won't warm up to it right away because it's practical. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Wait till River's End gets a load of this. decided to spend a few months in our townhouse. You're trespassing. Well, that's funny. I was about to say the same thing to you. But let's ask the man who owns the land. You gonna throw us off your lot, Doc? So you're behind this. This dump stays right here next to your store, Johnson, till the council cleans it up by voting a housing project. We're licked, Johnson. We have to do it. We can't leave this mess here. Let's call a meeting right away. Second the motion. Terry, come on. You're not going to get away with this. That's the fastest <laughs> job of meeting calling I ever saw. <laughs> they just never knew who to hit them. <laughs> I wish I was going to be there with you, Doc, to see the fun. Was this stunned you idea? Sure. What's the matter, Doc? They're licked, ain't they? Well, they're licked for the moment and we're licked for good. I wanted these people to live in Riversend, not just have houses here. I was trying to create understanding. 
Not bitterness. Right now, Squatter's Town is further away from River's End than it was out there beyond the town limits. Dr. Christian, I don't want to bother you, but Martha, she's, she's all sick again. Where is Sienna? Oh. I knew you were trying to help me. Now let's have a big R. Ah. Does the light bother you, Martha? It's so bright. Don't be silly, Martha. It's just a teeny weeny light. <laughs> Martha, don't be such a cry baby. She's usually so brave. I'm afraid she's just as brave as ever. What is it, Doctor? We'll do a spinal puncture before we can be you about anything. Come on, darling. Stop stalling, Johnson. Let's vote the project and get it over with. Listen to this. Whereas, blah, 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 blah. It shall be within the authority of the town council to condemn and order the police to remove any structures, habitations, etc., etc., that the health commissioner shall declare to be a health menace. Ah, there you are. How many times have we heard Christian say, and right in this room, that those shanties are health menace? <laughs> He's right. That's right. Gentlemen, our civic duty is clear. We'll just have to throw them out. Wait a minute. Shouldn't we consult Dr. Christian about this? Certainly not. All we have to do is find the chief and a couple of deputies. There might be trouble. Wait! There won't be any trouble unless we make it. Let the doctor... I move the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Now let's find the chief. Spinal meningitis. Well, what? Doesn't sound serious to me, Doctor. It's just a stall. Step aside, Doctor. Get back. 
I should have said epidemic spinal meningitis. What's that? It's a highly contagious disease with a high mortality rate. A single case may spread rapidly over the whole district, especially if there are unsanitary conditions, overcrowding, malnutrition, and excessive dampness. Chief? Yes, Doctor. I want this entire section put under a strict bond team. No one is to leave or enter it. The safety of the whole town depends on you and your men. All right, man. You heard what the doctor said. Clear the crowd away. We'll throw a barricade up here. Get back. Buddy, break it up, break it up. You've seen those two roughnecks of mine? I'm sorry, lady. Back up, please. Come on, get back, everybody. We're sorry you're sick. We could give you a present. It'd make you feel any better. We found it in Mrs. Stewart's bathroom. Jeez, well. Hey! Get away from me! Come over here. You kids want to catch that stuff? Get them out of here, Dave. Hey, wait a minute. These kids were playing on that bed a couple of days ago. Have you been feeling sick? No. Huh? Stiff neck or anything? Well? Well, answer them, have you? Don't shout, old Dave. Come here. Ow! <laughs> as soon as I heard there was trouble, I knew you'd be in it. Come along. That normal will take care of you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's Dr. Christian's order. But he's the man who pulled this trick, you imbecile. What? Hey, come back here. <laughs> Get back, everybody. Don't worry about it. What are you trying to pull, Christian? These people are very sick, Johnson. It's meningitis. You don't expect me to believe that. They're getting off this land. Everybody that's been exposed to the infection stays right here, and that goes for you, too. Me? Well, what do you mean? Your quarantine. What? Why, that's ridiculous. I won't stand for it. Why? I'm sick. This meningitis, it's just a kid's disease, isn't it? Partly. It hits all ages and classes. about that epidemic. They say there's three new cases tonight. Well... Let's go see what's happening. All right. So what? They've had epidemics in Squatter's Town before. But we didn't know about it. This is different. Well, if we're going, let's go now. Or we won't get near enough to see a thing. Just pulled the curtain. 
and you'll be well very soon. I won't be. Cutting a tooth. That's what made him cry. Doctor. Doctor, then anything he hasn't. I never saw a healthier baby. Oh. Then there's, there's anything we can do to help, Doctor. We didn't make them live in those dirty shacks. I didn't say we did, did I? It's not really our responsibility. Well, no. They're not part of our town. Or at least they weren't. Out of this. How much could you get, Roy? Plenty of sulfonilamide. There isn't enough serum, but they're rushing more. Good work, Roy. We treat our first duty. Dave! Get the hypodermic sterilized. Dave, tell everybody they have to be inoculated. Right. Johnson! Johnson, would you get some alcohol and cotton and prepare the people over there for inoculation? Do, do you mean me? Why shouldn't he mean you? Well, I... That kind of work, it's not dignified. Dignified? Who do you think is responsible for this? We neglected these people because they were around the bend. We didn't see them. We didn't even think about them. We didn't have to do anything about them. The only dignified thing around here is the patience of these people. You've got something there. You've got something there. You know, I'd like to do something for those people. So would I. We don't know what's good for this men and... men and whatever it is. My chicken broth is good for everything. I bet they could use a few blankets. We could use some new ones anyway. That's right. Must be about seven cases already. Too bad the hospital isn't finished yet. Well, yeah, I feel I'd vote for that housing project. Come up right now? Well, we can't very well do anything about it right now. I suppose not. Not officially. Well, I... I'd better go. I just remembered an important appointment. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. My wife is waiting for me. Well, so long, fellas. We're all ready for you. I'll take the kids first. Hey, we ought to clean this dump up before Christian gets here. Good idea. What about yours? Well, I... <laughs> well, as we all feel the same, let's do something official, in a non-official way.
pretty soon, Jane, now. Yeah. I thought you said you didn't like ice cream. Hello, Judy. Dave and I have been talking about the children. They're going to stay with me. Uh, yeah, uh, the kids uh, have developed kind of a mother complex. This has made me realize I want to devote my life to them and to no one else. Oh, it's hard. But you still have your work, and in a few months, you'll have forgotten. Uh, Yes, I can bury myself in my work. But I don't think I could ever forget us. I'll let you know where to send my closing check, Doc. So long, kid. <laughs> Give away, Ruthie. So you're quitting me? Sure, I don't have to stay around here and let you exploit me now that I've got the kids off my neck. Goodbye, Dave. Goodbye, Doc. I just want to say, I misjudged you, Dave. I know now you're someone that I can admire and trust. Far be it for me to destroy such a beautiful face. Say, is that the drugstore burning? Him now. There isn't even any smoke. 